All right, so last week we showed you our finalized design on our solar panels, both the upper and the lower layer. So this week what we're focusing on is trying to use a linear actuator to actually move these panels out um, automatically with an electric motor. So that's the project that we're working on this week. All right, so in order to facilitate that, we have actually purchased a linear actuator, a really tall one. So this linear actuator, um, this was actually the cheapest one we could find. We did look at air systems and we couldn't find anything over, I think like 32 inches. Um, we actually need this to come out over 42 and then preferably somewhere around 45. So luckily this fits that bill. So this um, will actuate uh, 1200 millimeters. So that turns out to be just over 47 inches. So what that'll allow us to do is it'll allow the panel to go all the way out then plus an additional six inches. So that'll give us that gap here that we were talking about last time to prevent the shading from the upper panel onto the lower panel. So one of the issues with this linear actuator is that it is 24 volt. Um, we don't have a 24 volt source and so what we have been using is just one of our uh, DeWalt uh, cordless battery batteries. So we've just stuck a couple pins in here <clears throat> and then we've also on the other end of this is we've just put a couple alligator clips. So these are pretty simple in that you hook them up one way, it goes out, you turn it around and it comes back in the other way. Um, so they're pretty, and they have limit switches. So um, once it goes all the way down, that's it. You can keep applying power to it, but it's off. And same with when it goes all the way out, you can keep applying power to it, but it'll turn off automatically when it gets all the way out. Of course on the bus we won't be using a drill battery, we'll actually have a 24 volt uh, buck converter because our battery puts out 48 volts. So they make converters that'll go from 48 to 24 volts and they're relatively inexpensive. They're around $20 um, and they're waterproof and they have uh, fuses and stuff like that built in. So we'll be using, when we actually mount this on the bus, but for testing, we don't have the bus here, it's in Mexico and um, we thought using the cordless drill battery was um, a decent interim solution are fairly light so it's not super heavy um, but they are kind of expensive so uh, one of these costs about two hundred dollars and so our plan was and oh it'll push 900 newtons which when we translated that to pounds um, turned out to be just under 200 pounds it was like 198 pounds so we thought hey, that should be strong enough to maybe push two solar panels out at the same time. So um, in order to save on costs, we're gonna see if we can rig one of these up to push two solar panels. So in order to try to get one of these to power two panels and to test it out, we had to build an extension to our little model. So when we built this little model, we thought just one is good enough for now and we can build it all up there and use that. But now we've gone ahead and built out, we've just made a little box to support the rails at the right height. We've purchased an additional rail and now we can mount this in and it will kind of simulate this is what half of our solar array will look like when it's on the roof. And so um, we can bolt them together and fit them all up just as if it was on the, solar, on the roof. And now we can see, hey, can we push two of these panels next to each other with just the one actuator. All right, so one of the problems we had was how are we gonna get one linear actuator to push all four of these? So the first thing is we're gonna mount this linear actuator right in the center piece here um, where the support is. So now the problem remains is how are we gonna attach it to the two panels on the side? So the panels slide on these sliders and what we did was we left a little bit of space in the front so that we could have a place to attach things if we needed them to be tied together or we needed some kind of clamp to have an area to, uh, to, to clamp in. So we made them intentionally longer than the solar panels um, for that very reason. So now that we have that, what we, what we did in our initial plan was we used a smaller piece 
of three quarter by one eighth inch angle thinking if these spans are not very wide, this doesn't have to be incredibly sturdy. Um, so what we did was we tied them here close to the center and we figured if we only push on the first four, that should be enough for the last, sort of the last uh, slider to just kind of follow along with it. So if we were to push it from the center and pull it from the center, then the last slide, since it's attached to the panel and it kind of works as one unit, it should be able to just slide along with it. And what we found out is we were mostly right. It mostly did work that way. Unfortunately, this aluminum was just a little bit too bendy. So it kind of, it just, it was a little too flexible. And, and so towards the end, when these things were getting towards the end of their range, when the actuator would push it all the way out, it would start to kind of wander a little bit and it would bind a little bit as it wandered. So it would kind of bind and then unbind and then bind and unbind. And it, it just seemed like we could make it more stable. So what we came up with is to try a larger piece of aluminum angle. So now this is substantially larger. So this is one inch by one quarter. And now we've made it long enough so that it will fit across all of the sliders now. And so we're not depending on the panel to keep it kind of secure. We're actually pushing on all six of the sliders now instead of just the inner four. So the other one, we had had a shorter piece of aluminum. This one, we've gone ahead and made it the whole length and it pushes on every single slider. So we're hoping that will kind of make it way more uniform and combined with this is a bigger, sturdier piece of aluminum as well as now reaching the entire way across will eliminate that kind of sway that happened at the end. So that's what we'll be testing today. Okay, so progress on the actuator. We've clamped in these little shelves here. They're just two, uh, two inch by two inch by an eighth inch angle. Um, we've gone ahead and just more or less clamped them in. Um, when we get the final measurement, we'll weld these pieces of angle in um, so that they're secure. But we're just trying to get a measurement for where the actuator will actually sit. So right now we have the actuator about half an inch below the actual panel and it will push straight out and it will be attached to this two inch little shelf that we make. So we've got a couple clamps that we're going to clamp this guy on here and then we'll probably actually either VHB or glue this guy on here just to get it to stick a little better. So that's the plan for that. So for the push bar, we've gone ahead and cut the ends and sanded them down a little bit. And we've just clamped them in for now. And so the actuator will fit right in between these two little guys. So we will glue and rivet these in very likely and then drill a hole in here for the actuator, for the end of the actuator to actually articulate that. So that's what the next steps will be. Right? 
All right, so this is our actuator here, and this is the little thing we made. It's held in by a pin and then has a cotter pin in it to kind of hold in the pin. So this is now clamped to just these uh, upright supports. So the actuator is actually just clamped in with a couple clamps. And now we've clamped in this quarter inch uh, by one and a quarter inch bar um, just to the front of these guys. Um, when we actually do this, it'll be a little bit tighter, but we had to get the clamps on there. So it's a, it's a little bit outside. So it'll be a little bit tighter than this, but um, you get the general idea. These are all hooked together by this one big bar that runs and hits every single slider. So now we've got the actuator hooked up to our little battery. So we're gonna go ahead and trigger it on and um, see if it works for us. You ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, that's the end. So we see that we do have our little gap here of about five to, six, five to six inches. And it did start wobbling a little bit at the end, um, just a little bit. Um, it was much worse than that when we had our other bar in. But we think once we secure everything down and get everything tightened up, because these panels are just kind of sitting in these uh, trays, and the front is just clamped onto the front. So once we get everything secured and it stays square and straight, um, it should reduce that wobble a little bit. So this is just seeing, hey, is this actually feasible or is it gonna work? And um, we think it is. So we're gonna or go ahead and reverse it. Just start it. So there it is. So it's pulled all the way in. And the one thing we wanted to test too while we kind of have it in is how these are these held in enough just by that shock. And they certainly seem to be. So um, this should hold, I guess up to 200 pounds. <laughs> That's what it's rated to pull. But it should be able to hold it in place. Um, so anyway, that's how it works. Um, we think it works pretty well. We are probably going to make a few tweaks, but I think this is going to be close to the final design. So once we get everything cinched in and everything is connected and, it, and the solar panel doesn't do that because it's kind of tied into each of the sliders, it should be a lot smoother when it goes in and out. So it's, it's not too bad now, but when we secure this with the bolts 
through the side. This select is just one big piece that slides. It shouldn't it shouldn't do the the shimmy thing. The shimmy thing is because there's some play in the mounts. Um, there's just a tiny, tiny bit of play in the mounts, and so what that does is it causes it to be able to adjust. And so once this is one solid thing, um, we hope that it will just go out really smoothly. So anyway, that's how it's going to work. Um, this is our plan going forward. So we'll have to make one more of these um, for the other side. And um, I think we're going to call this almost done for now. We, we're going to weld the little plate underneath. Um, so the little little table that it kind of goes on that the actuator sits on. We'll weld that in. And then after that, um, the rest of it is actually getting it up onto the bus and we've got to wait to get it back from paint for that. So we may start a series of new projects. So we'll see what we have on the horizon.